It was a baptism of fire. The very first day we went into the um, peace talks up at the castle buildings, um, we had no idea what we were letting ourselves in for. Remember, many of those parties had already been involved in at least half a dozen previous rounds of negotiations. So they were old hands at this. Um, but some there were some new parties. So the loyalist parties were the new parties. And so we were very smart and reached out to David Irvine and Billy Hutchison and to Gary McMichael and David Adams and asked them to meet with us because we were all new and we wanted to make sure that we weren't overrun by those who had been around for a long time. The Alliance Party, the SDLP and the Ulster Unionist Party were the big going to be there and they had all been involved in previous talks and we none of us had. So that was really work well spent because they came to this house and we used to cook dinner here on a Friday night and we got to know them really well. And they got to know us and began to trust us. And well, trust is maybe a big word to use in the context of peace negotiations, but realized that we were serious and that we were attempting to include them as much as possible when no one else actually wanted them much at the table. Sinn Féin weren't at the table because the ceasefire hadn't been reinstated after the Canary War bomb in 95. So for the first year, 96 to 97, Sinn Féin were outside the talks. But we took the view that we should create a back channel. And so practically every month, myself and some others would go and meet with Sinn Féin as part of the process. And privately, and secretly often, but it became public. But we didn't care. We felt that this was part of our policy and principle of inclusion to try and convince them that these talks were serious and that they should work hard to get back in, uh, which they eventually did. Um, so that first year of the talks was very tiresome. It focused too much on rules and regulations and it didn't really get down to the substance. Um, we didn't have mediators, so the relationships between the parties weren't good. And often we were the only people that everybody was speaking to. Though having said that, some of the unionist parties were very hostile towards us because they felt we shouldn't have been talking to Sinn Féin or even to the PUP and the UDP. And, um, and they were very public in that hostility. So it became quite um, publicly known that they were calling us names telling us to go home, telling us to have babies, to stand by our men. Um, we turned all that into good fun and humour because we weren't about to accept any of that nonsense. But it was quite humiliating to be treated in that way because we were, you know, women who had a lot of experience and expertise, but we were being seen as outsiders who shouldn't be at the table. There wasn't a day went past when they didn't say to us, they, we usurped a role in that we should the election system that got us there was a joke according to them because it was this list system in which 10 parties got elected instead of individuals and um, so we were constantly reminded that we were um, in a place that didn't belong to us and we had to fight to make sure that we held and sustained that place once we got into it but it was a very uncomfortable place um, and so we had to bond together very well to make sure that we had good friends and good support um, in the teams that we were building inside those talks.